What's up, you guys? Todd Falcone here. Welcome back to ToddFalcone.com. You might be catching me on my podcast. Maybe you're on YouTube. If you want to get the rest of this particular episode, you want to head over to ToddFalcone.com forward slash episode 58. I'll mention that now. And so if you're catching me on audio, I'll mention it at the end as well. But I wanted to talk to you guys today about a subject that came up as a result of a Facebook post that I did. And a guy said, look, I put 50 some odd people into my business and uh, nobody is working. So what do you do when nobody on your team is working? So I, I remember clearly having that, that situation personally because when I started in network marketing, I was showing up, I was working and I had recruited a number of people, but I was really like the only guy I had one person that was working and the other two knows how many, 20 or 30, none of them were doing anything. And so I understand the, the challenge or the frustration, and there's, there's a couple of different ways of looking at it. It might be that you, the right person just hasn't joined your business yet. And, and there, while this is a numbers game and it's a percentages game, maybe the right person who's ready to roll just hasn't come in yet. So if you've recruited five and nobody's working, you know, maybe the right person just hasn't joined yet. If you recruited 100 and nobody on your team is working, there's probably something else going on because, at, I mean, if you put 100 distributors in personally and nobody is doing anything, then there's probably something else happening. So let's talk about in today's episode, what do you do when you, you put people in and nobody on your team is working? Well, well, one solution for me would be, okay, if nobody on the team is working, then I think a wise idea would be to continue to put other people in until you find somebody that wants to get to work. And then when you put them into your business, you actually help them figure the game out. So now if you're looking at, and again, I got people that are plugging in from YouTube on my page, on my podcast, wherever you might be, I, every situation's different. So if you've put 10 people in and you're like, hey, nobody, nobody out of my 10 is working. Well, maybe you just haven't found the right person yet. Um, maybe you got to look at what have you been doing with your new people? Have you been helping, assisting your new people figure it out? Or have you been kind of throwing them out and hoping, keeping your fingers crossed that they're actually going to do something, that they're going to figure it out on their own? Because the reality is if you're putting people in and you're not giving them the guidance, the direction, the mentoring, the help that they deserve uh, and that they need, then they're going to come in and just falter and then they're going to bail or they're just not going to do anything because they don't know what to do. So I think there's, there's a couple of solutions to you, uh, you know, what things that you can do when somebody on your team uh, or everybody on your team isn't working. The first thing for me is, Hey, if, if I got a bunch of people on my team and none of them are showing up, none of them are doing anything. Well, I'm going to go put somebody in who, and, until I find somebody who is going to do something. Now, if in the past your habits have been, well, maybe I haven't been a really good sponsor. I haven't been really good at helping those people start. I haven't, uh, you know, if, to be honest with you, I mean, I've signed a bunch of people up and I never gave them any help. And, you know, there's a reason why they're probably not doing anything. That might be one reason. Another reason, maybe the, the people that you put on board, maybe they just weren't the right people. And, uh, and that's that, you know, I mean, sometimes people sign up. I mean, some of you have, I think about it, how, how many of you have had somebody sign up in your business who never did anything? They literally never did anything. You sign them up and even, even if you're willing to help them, you're like, hey, I'll, I'll plug you into the training. Let's do a launch session. Let's get you going. And they become a disappearing act. Well, obviously that wasn't the right person because the right person will show up for your, your, the training, will show up for your strategy session, will begin to take action with you if you're providing them the guidance, direction, and assistance, especially for somebody who's brand new and who's never done network marketing before. They need your help. Like, I mean, I can't even imagine if I was brand new in network marketing like I was and signed up and then um, they just threw me out there and said, hey, good luck, Todd. I didn't get that. I had intensive education and training from the moment I signed up. We had a Saturday training every single Saturday. It was the same Saturday training, and it was, it was, it was teaching you 
how to talk to people, how to engage people, how to deal with objections and questions, how to demonstrate the product that we were bringing to, to market at the time. It was, and it was a, what the training went from like, what, one to four every Saturday. Uh, but it was, it was a powerful thing that we did by providing people a path to run on. So if you're looking at your organization right now and you're going, hey, nobody's working. Well, how many people have you put in? Well, I've put three people in. Oh, okay, well, that's not a very big sample size, three people. Okay, well, you only put three people in, so maybe you just haven't got the right person. But if you put 50 people in, if you've put 100 people in, and let's say, let's say, let's take the number 100. If you had put 100 people in personally and none of them are working, you got to kind of go back at, like, what did I do with these people? Did I, did I provide them support? Did I provide them guidance? Did, that, did I get hands-on with them? and help them to build their business? Or did I just sign them up and kept my fingers crossed that they might figure it out on their own? I don't know, you know, you are the person that has to look at that. So again, in this episode, like what do you do when no one on your team is working? Well, for me, if nobody on, on my team is working, I'm gonna get to work and I'm gonna go put somebody else in, which is again, another reason why you never wanna go into this management mode of just working with the team. You've always gotta be replacing people, unfortunately, because there's attrition in this business. There's attrition in every business, right? So we've gotta replace people. Even, like you might think you've made it. Like there's too many people, unfortunately, that get in this business, they make some money and they think that they've made it, when in fact, in all reality, they're making some money, but they haven't made it, right? Um, I think that, the, the, in fact, this would be, this would be a, uh, a great way for you to, to decide when it's time for you to live your life and, and, and start really having a whole bunch of fun and, and being in playtime. When you have got the house that you want, the cars that you want, uh, whatever things that you want, where your college education for your children is, is covered, where you've got an investment portfolio, investment plan, and you've got a million bucks in the bank, you've got a million dollars in the bank over and above all these other things that you have, then, if you wanna go into playtime mode, feel free. Problem is people get into this playtime mode way, 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 way before they're ever even remotely close to that kind of situation. And then when their check adjusts because of attrition, they are in a panic mode and they end up just not being in a real happy situation. So again, if you're in a situation, like first of all, you're always gonna have people that do and don't do. There's always gonna be a percentage of people, even if you're a great sponsor, even if you're hands-on, even if you're willing to help, even if you got a smoke and kick butt company, a great onboarding process, there's some people that just, no, no matter what, aren't going to do, right? So, you know, for every, I don't know, uh, I mean, even like, I, I think I'm a pretty good sponsor when I was in, when I was actively building the field, I would be very actively involved in, in, in working with people and helping them to do the business, to help them get going, I still had a percentage of people, a decent percentage that would never do. So I don't know what the number is. I mean, for every 10, you might have uh, two or three that go do something significant and maybe the other seven, they kind of hang out for a little bit in spite of your ability and your willingness to help them. And they end up doing nothing. And so it, that's why one of the reasons why we have to play the numbers game. We gotta play the numbers. We've gotta be willing to work with our people. They've just you know, at least identified by giving the company money, hey, I'm, I'm interested in doing something here. Now they've gotta back it up with action, but the only way for them to really back it up with action is for, for us to provide them uh, some know-how, some understanding, some comprehension on how to do what we do so that they're not just like, oh great, I'm in this thing, I don't know what the heck to do now, what do I do? Because if they don't know what to do, if you haven't provided them that kind of directions, that, that kind of clarity, then they're probably not gonna do anything and that may be a reason why. So there's different reasons why people aren't doing things. Um, but I would say, number one, get your, per, your personal production up. That, that's a way to solve the problem. Uh, number two is look at your personal onboarding strategy. Like what are you doing to bring people on board? Are you hands-on? Are you helping? Are you providing the guidance and the direction that's required for new people to understand how to do what it is that we do in this business? Does that make sense to you? I think it does. So simple. I mean, those are two things, right? Get your own personal production up. And number two, look at your onboarding and your startup process. And are you, are you doing it? And look, and again, if you, the other thing is if we go to like large numbers, let's, okay, let's just play, let's play this game for a second. You put a hundred people in, and you have done everything that you can to help those people, 
man, we got to look at ourselves. What kind of person am I? Like, I, okay, I was able to enroll them, but they, they never did anything. Uh, if you, I mean, I, I, I think it would be pretty hard, honestly, to have personally recruited 100 people into your business and none of them do anything. So typically when I get this question is I put five or six people in and you know, a couple of them put a few people in. I got a team of maybe 40, but you know, there's like two of them doing anything. Well, how many did you really put in? I only put in five and then they put in a couple and that, that's about it. Nobody really did anything significant. But if you put, uh, honestly, like here we are, you know, whatever date you're watching this, doesn't matter. Uh, I think it would be important for you to, to get your personal production up. And to me, that's the solution for any kind of problem is my personal production. If I, because the only thing I can control is me. The only thing you can control is you. So if you want to get, if you want to get more people doing things, then put more people into the business. And then, of course, make sure you're assisting them in the onboarding process, staying in connection with them, staying in contact with them, and helping them to figure this game out all the way through. I mean, if, in order for you to lock somebody in, I mean, if, if we can, quote, lock somebody in, the sooner we can help them achieve a check, a, a check that's sizable enough to keep their attention, the, the less likelihood that they're going to stop building the business. Although, even people at 10,000, 15, 20,000 a month, they stop. They think, oh my God, I've made it. And then their check adjusts and then they drop out of the business. It happens all the time. I've seen people at 20, 30,000 a month go into management mode and then they completely stop building and the next thing you know, you're, they're looking for a job. So that's one of the reasons why personal production, regardless of how big your check, is uh, a big thing that you should continue to do regardless of how big your check is. So again, I don't know where you're catching me. You might be catching me on my podcast, on audio. You might be catching me on YouTube, which is cool. Uh, there are some free downloads on my website, some resources for you. If you go to toddfalcone.com forward slash episode 58, T-O-D-D-F-A-L-C-O-N-E dot com forward slash episode 58, you can catch the rest of this. And I appreciate you guys for plugging in. We'll see you on another episode. We'll see you next time.